Perhaps you've heard it said that there is a certain category of believer that's very happy for the letter M found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26 we read, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. And it's been noted that it doesn't say not any. So we're thankful that the Lord saves rich and poor, every category of sinner. And I want to tell you a little story about one of those who would have fallen into the category of the noble. Count Pietro Guicciardini, who lived in Florence, Italy, born there July 21st, 1808 in the family palace in Florence. Florence was the home of the Medicis and Florence was a city renowned for its art and its buildings. So as one of the most prominent members of uh, a prominent family in northern Italy, he was called upon in 1833 by Leopold II if he would reorganize the educational system because of the rise of the Industrial Revolution. Now, for you history buffs, this is not to be confused with the Leopold II of Belgium. This Leopold II was the Grand Duke of Tuscany. And he asked his friend Pietro if he would reorganize the educational system. And in his research for this project, he looked for a textbook on moral teaching and Actually, the brother of one of the cardinals, a man named Lambruschini, told him to try the New Testament. He searched through the vast library of the palace, and all he could find was a copy of the Latin Vulgate. But one day, he was descending the stairs of the main entrance to the palace, and there was a poor man who had a little room just off the side, where he was a bootmaker. And Pietro noticed that he was furtively looking at a book. And as the count descended the stairs, he hid the book and quickly slipped into his little room. And so the count went to him and asked him what was the book he was reading. And somewhat reluctantly, he showed him it was an Italian New Testament. The Count invited him up to the palace, and so began a series of Bible studies between Count Guicciardini and the bootmaker. It was during one of these studies that he came to realize his need of Christ as his personal Savior. Well, there was a strong persecution that rose up. The Jesuits took a very personal umbrage against especially members of the nobility who had become evangelicals. So he communicated to the authorities that if such was the case, he would have to leave Italy. On the eve of his leaving, he met with a number of other believers. They used this as a pretense. The gendarmes were sent, and this group of believers were arrested. Count Guicciardini spent 10 months in a fetid, damp prison. After that, he was released and he traveled to England. And there he met with people like George Mueller and Lord Radstock and Robert Cleaver Chapman and others. During his time in England, he also met Rossetti, the famous family of artists and poets. He had the privilege of pointing Rossetti to the Lord Jesus. They returned to Italy in 1854. With about a dozen evangelists, they began to work in northern Italy, in Genoa and Turin and Florence and many of the villages round about. In a period of about 25 years, they saw over 200 assemblies of believers saved and gathered together there in Italy. And as I thought about that, how the Lord in this very passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 says that God chooses the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, 
and the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence but of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written he who glories let him glory in the Lord and so in this little story we have a perfect illustration of this that God chose one of these noblemen but he saved him through the testimony of a bootmaker and God is able to do this today to take the mighty and bring them to the foot of the cross through the things that are nothing so that God might receive the glory <music>